Fuka. We are recording. This is uh, August 24th, 2017, Discovery Ascension. Oh, well, welcome, everyone. Um, what we normally do with the Discovery ones is, is we discern a mandate beforehand and... Um, uh, and then set our hearts on going to a particular place to really ask about what is that all about? Um, rather than some of our other encounters, we just come together and uh, seek a joint mandate. So this is a bit different. Um, and we felt a mandate today to go and explore some of the realms that we're discovering in infinity, which is um, really in the is to come. Um, so we've got the was, the what was, which we're calling eternity, sort of the um, early stages of uh, creation. And then the is, which is today and what is our timeline. And then the is to come, which is what, what we, along the timeline, what we can influence um, uh, right, right now, really. Um, and so there's been some interesting revelation from Ian Clayton, which is really resonating with me and, and also with, with the encounters I've done um, about being three levels. Um, he calls it a new day. And then the second one he calls age of Zion and the third one he calls infinity or inf the unfathomable. And we've done a lot of exploring around the age of Zion and what that means in the past. And so we sort of, um, well, some of us feel a bit more comfortable talking about, about that. Um, we've been doing a lot in the age of new beginnings um, out of the new Jerusalem. We had an encounter where it was actually, we were spontaneously taken there with our um, bench. We didn't plan to go there, but we ended up going and, it, and, and had a mandate to explore what infinity was. And just for the recording, I'll just share a few things that will help you just frame up what we're, what we're seeking to identify today. And um, yeah, I, I put it on a page so you can go onto the website and reread this anytime. It's called Encounters in Infinity. But some people saw um, a vortex, which we identified as infinite changing levels. So it's a really place of complete change. It's not a static, this is, this is it. Um, and so there's a lot of creative elements going on there. And I think that's something we've got to get our heads around as to what can we create, how... Um, and, ha and how, does, how does it work? How is it constantly evolving? Um, I saw really clearly some cities um, in there and we're seeing that the linked with the city in New Jerusalem in Revelations 22 is, um, is a continuation of this. We saw, we saw the cities uh, in New Jerusalem are linked with our scrolls. So it's like we rule over our, own city so i think we've almost got to see ourselves um as a city as a, a descending city new jerusalem descending over the mandates that we have and then the cities in infinity seem to be a, an extension of that of, of what things we've created there and um what blueprints we've seen um is it, is sort of present there. Um, and what I've put here, we know there is a city in, oh yeah, no, I've just said that, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it makes sense we have a city to rule from. Um, oh yeah, and the other thing we saw interestingly was we could create beings like, like angels. That was a, quite a shock, that. Um, and there was a big movement evidencing huge acceleration constantly, never ending change as people create within parameters set by the father, but no evil is permitted as evil is being destroyed in the lake of fire. 
So um, if you're engaging any form of e evil or aliens or weird things, I'd really ask you to examine if you're in the highest levels of heaven and you're not engaging at too lower level because we've seen some people are having those kind of experiences and um, we're also seeing that some are not knowing what realms they're in and so asking what realm they're in is really important setting your heart on being in a particular realm to make sure you're not floating around at some lower level and, you, and um, <clears throat> operating at a, at a lower level yeah, we also saw the constant flow of the seven spirits uh, and the angels in a figure of eight in the infinity shape. And it was almost like we were inside the two sort of circles of the infinity shape and, and they kind of flowed round like a, like a, a stream of water, I suppose. Um, and, and you could really see that the, the, there was nothing static about it. It was a constant morphing and an engaging. Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose. I mean, I mean, some of other heavens is, is like that, but I think this has more to do with creation rather than seeing a blueprint. Whereas we go to a lot of other places and, you know, we sort of asking what is what is the heavenly blueprint what is what needs to be done now and this is more i think about us having the freedom to create but it's all linked so the eternity ends up linking with infinity so it's like a circle so it really um i mean in the end it all merges into one so you know i wouldn't stress too much about you know, is this infinite or is eternity? But I think that the, the, what I'm sensing is the difference is the, the eternity is more you go and look to see what happened and you go to govern from there. But infinity is where you, you, you go to create is what I'm discerning at the moment, but I'm still pretty new here. Um, so... Okay, well, we'll just go, um, I'll just go through a simple Ascension protocol for anyone that's new. Um, so let's just all remember um, we're equal priests so we can all contribute to the facilitation of this group. There's no leaders and um, you're all welcome to observe or contribute, whatever makes you comfortable. Sorry, I just lost my page. Just turning the video off. How did I get that back? Um, yeah, let's just um, step through Jesus the door and enter into the veil of life to the Holy of Holies. Let's go to the highest, most intimate place. Um, we don't want to be going into the inner court. Um, and let's just engage in intense intimacy there with the, with the Godhead. And we just want to ask all the heavenly hosts to assist us to um, hear and discern well and to, to engage with truth. And we just honour you all and we ask for your, um, your engagement there. As you engage Jesus, you might want to engage the blood of the lamb and just use that as a way of engaging what we often say we put our body and soul under our spirit and off ourselves as a living sacrifice um, we're just seeing that alignment is really key 
Um, it's probably a, actually probably the most key thing I'm seeing now is to what extent is our body and our soul under the under our spirit and under the Holy Spirit. But also we just give ourselves now as a sacrifice. Uh, giving up all agendas, let's give up any agenda of what we would like to see, what we feel comfortable with seeing, what we're ready to see. Um, <clears throat> let's just open all our gates and say if it's from the Father, if it's truth, then we're willing to embrace that. And um, to do that, you can renew your first love as well that you can, you're willing to submit to the total government of God and move away from your own personal government of your life. Just drawing on the love of the Father. Just seeing an immense um, element of living out of eternity and affinity is really being able to draw on the full love of the father such that we are um completely um able to submit to his agendas so i was seeing this blue and white cold fire then i think it's the spirit of the lord here in the holy of holies and i just see the radiance of his spirit emanating off of it like shoom, shoom, shoom. Mm. Man, I was already drunk before this call, <laughs> and um, I'm just saying it's 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 keeping on. <laughs> There's a lot of fun to be had in infinity. Oh yes, yeah, so we really should just set our hearts on. Um, let's just set our hearts on going to that new day. And what and asking what does that new day mean? How is it different from the age of Zion? How is it different from infinity? It's the first realm. Oh. So what does it mean about new day? What what do we need to know and understand about it?
I'm seeing a lot in this realm is to do with our hunger for um, wanting a new day, wanting that cre creating new, but in line with perfection, not redeeming an old mountain. As I'm really sensing we've got to set our hunger on this. We've got to pull on heaven for this revelation and that comes from desire. It just doesn't come from just just being pla um, placid. I was sensing a need to untether from the old and tether to the new day. I'm getting confirmation on that, yeah. Yeah, I can feel the pull, the pull back. As if we're so used to working in the old day that it's very hard for us to focus on a new thing. We can't get our head around that anything could be different than it is. Something I'm often led to do is when I wake up in the morning, it's like I see Jesus in front of me and um, and it's like I pour into him like all the things that that I need to be cleansed of for the day. And um, like anything that may have happened like unconsciously while I was sleeping or, you know, whatever. And and just like it's it's just a way of like cleansing myself before I start the new day. I don't know if that helps anybody. But and maybe we want to engage with that now. But um, yeah, kind of letting Jesus be a kidney dialysis machine and just cleaning everything up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's also like like stepping into unity with Him, and um, yeah, it's it's cleaning out the gunk, but it's also like being in unity and in in intimacy with Him. And starting anew, you know. So not mechanical, but the cleansing out of relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like my spirit goes into him and he goes into me and, and it's just like, and it's releasing of the old. I take a lot of baths in his blood. <laughs> stuff like that so yeah well i wonder if we should just <clears throat> untether in whatever way is significant for you and and how you're led for me it's always like a a cutting i always feel like i need to cut these strings and that's what i feel now i need to cut the string from the is um, so that my spirit's free to go in the is to come.
I was led to trade all my is for the is to come. Mm. You know, we might be encountering here this blockage that's in the is that um, is stopping people coming into the is, is to come. I've been asking about what this blockage is and I actually had some revelation this morning around, um, oh, that's right, it was around the fact that people are not fully choosing to live out of eternity and to escape the chaos um, of, of um, so the fact of it living from the lower realms instead of the higher realms and then the chaos is so so massive that it, it stops you hearing well and keeping that peaceful sort of um, openness so when you're in the in the was what a lot of us are seeing is that you you see yourself above the earth above the star houses um, and you and then through the firmament and you're looking down through all those and so you're so separated from the chaos it's a beautiful place it feels so secure and peaceful and actually i'm sensing yeah oh oh i'm sensing that's how you get into infinity as well you have to go through eternity you can't go from the is you can't go from the now you have to put yourself in that higher realm of eternity and then infinity is above that so we've got all these realms we've got eternity heaven of heaven heaven kingdom of heaven kingdom of god and kingdom of the earth so they're like stacked up in layers so you can almost visualize yourself going up these different realms and choosing one to operate from and then there's a lot of angels in fours that create windows around these different realms so you can um, engage the, these the four the sets of four angels and that's an interesting question isn't it if there is any fours in infinity i don't know the answer to that And there's also portals we're seeing. That's what I'm seeing now is a portal of um, when you're in eternity, there's like these windows going up, these different levels of eternity, and you can go up and up through these windows. So I'm seeing that now. I'm seeing the highest realm of eternity. There's a portal, there's a window that you go up into the new day. Hmm. And it, it, it sort of produces like a lift shaft. If you can imagine that, you can choose to go up and down this lift shaft through all these windows.
Jane, for the other fo uh, folks in the other part of the world, lift shaft would be an elevator shaft, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. We have to think of an environment. We know the environment in the New Jerusalem. We know uh, its perfection of um, complete health, provision, abundant supply of anything. The glory of God is the light. Oh, I'm getting this real sense. This new day is is basically what you want it to be. So it's going to be different for everyone. And it's to start us getting our creative uh, abilities going that when we know enough about heaven and 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 our mandates it, it's a blank piece of paper ah that's what it is it's a blank piece of paper where we we get to draw on it what mm. what do you want in line with everything you've seen in your mandates and your governing to date what do you want in this new day mm. Is this okay. the place of new cities that we create? Our own city? Oh, create our own city. Now, is that in this place or is that elsewhere also? Yeah, well, I think that I think it is when you create it, yeah. I think you begin to take dominion over your city in New Jerusalem in the age of new beginnings. And you get used to the fact that you're in this city and it's yours and you can set the rules. So you're, it's almost like you just take your throne in new beginnings and new Jerusalem. And then this is where you start to create it and say, well, this is how it's going to function. This is going to happen. These are the rules. This is what's going to be here. This is what it's going to look like. Like I've got a golden city. And... Mine has a lot of um, things around the functioning of the ecclesia. And that's what I create. Can I, can I share what I was seeing or is, I don't want to interrupt anything else. So <laughs> I love you, Jane. Um, <laughs> so I was just, Normally, when I when I see things in heaven, I'm like actually in heaven. But for some reason, this time I'm seeing um, it's like we're over the earth, but we're all flying. Yeah. And um, and I saw myself at first. I was like zooming around like Superman, and I was seeing myself over Sydney. And I went by the opera house, and I was seeing people like working and doing things in real time. And then I zoomed back up and Nell had said that she saw, she told me that she saw us like above the clouds. I zoomed back up and I saw her there, but then everybody else was there with above the earth, yeah. above the earth like, like firmament past, yeah, up above. yeah, up above Basically the firmament. Yeah. And, um, and I saw everybody else up there and then just as, just and then we started like taking the clouds and creating things out of the clouds and making substance out of it and 
at that moment, like literally one second later, you said it's about creating or something like that. <laughs> so that was really good. And I, I, I yeah, I was just, I haven't seen it quite like this before, but it's cool. Excellent. So I'm feeling this question coming to me that the father's asking, saying, what would you choose to create in line with your major scroll? What, what would you choose to create right now? Whew, it's a big question. Woof. Wow. I was just getting the sense that whatever we, whatever I was seeing us creating in the clouds, like we were manifesting it physically on earth. And I know that we do that too, like in everything we do. Right. Um, but I don't know. I felt like there was special significance in that. And maybe it has like what we're creating has to do with our scrolls. Um, like, what are we going to choose to create? What are we going to choose to manifest on earth from our scrolls? Does, yeah. I don't know if, is anybody getting anything on that? Yeah, I think it is. And it's really hard because I think so many of us are just so used to just, you know, asking to be shown things. And then just doing what we're shown. And this is taking us to a whole new level of, of maturity. And it's, woof, it's like, don't copy this picture. You design your own. I'm yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm like, oh, oh, too much freedom here. Too much freedom. <laughs> woof. I can see I'm so used to looking instead of allowing it to just pour out my spirit. Um, this, um, I'm kind of seeing, this is Simone. I'm kind of seeing um, an invitation kind of like what happened um, this is what's coming to me. It's like the interstellar movie and how they had to leave earth just because it was, um, basically dying or being destroyed and they had to find a new, pl new planet to live. But, um, but the difference is what I'm seeing is that, uh, it's an opportunity to even create a new planet. Um, meaning that this planet doesn't even exist yet, and to totally design it, it's just incredible freedom to design it as you, as I see fit, kind of like, um, it's like I have the, the liberty to do what I've been assigned to do, I mean, total freedom to create. And so I'm like stepping back, like, hmm. I mean, you know, just not really know. I mean, just trying to figure out, or like you said, it's like it's freedom to, it's the liberty to create, to to create as you see fit. And um, so that's what I'm experiencing right now. And so I'm looking at. What I'm understanding to be my my scrolls right now, and thinking, you know, how okay, how would I do this from scratch? Not from Adam, but from from Jesus. 
So anyway, that's where I am right now. That's good. Mm. That's good. Yeah, to confirm that, I'm, I'm seeing my city and I'm seeing, I saw the roof of the city like blow open. So like I knew that that was, I was allowed to make it bigger, greater than I'd originally thought it, uh, it being. See, this is this is going beyond perfection because I can I can understand and I can really grasp perfection and the unity of the body and the ecclesia in perfection. So now I'm asking if it's beyond perfection, what would it do? That's my question, Jane. How does what we create here relate to? function in our current lives well say we had an ecclesia where there was absolute perfection there was complete unity harmony bliss um honor um everyone knew the scrolls of purpose they were all working in in that what would we want beyond that? That's why it's a new day. You know, what I saw before was I saw my city as a, like a Santa's workshop. And it was like all these little elves, which were the people, <clears throat> were all making these wonderful presents. And um, so what I took from that was that they, people were creating things that would bring immense pleasure for other people. So it was like, it was like we were all brand new children. We woke up on this perfect day and we had all these resources in front of us and we could do anything with them. So everyone was choosing, oh, okay then, this sounds fun. You know, like you're a kid, you just make something out of nothing, don't you? You can have a cardboard box and before you know it, you've got this wonderful game going and you're in this castle and you're doing this and you're doing that. It was like that. It's like... Oh, okay. So we'll create something that was was going to just express the magnificence of the resources we've got and our abilities. You see, this was what the father must have done, right? When he was in eternity with before the creation of the earth, he must have just suddenly thought, well, okay, what can I do? I've got all these ability and resources. What can I do? Okay, I'm going to create some trees. I'm going to create, you know, um, uh, flowers. But each was an expression of what was already in heaven. So... My birthday's next week, Jane, if you want to send a present my way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I actually, um, I, I did actually have some revelation on this yesterday. I suddenly got this thing of what I wanted to create. Because one thing that's been really upsetting me for a long, long time is um, mosquitoes and malaria. And I've just seen the m mosquito is a distortion of the DNA of what it was meant to be. We we're never meant to be subject to blood sucking insects that can pass on disease. And it's real reptilian seed. And I suddenly realized, ah, I could create a mosquito that does not suck blood. That would just be a harmless insect that would have some 
role in the eco structure of the I'm, earth. I'm uh, I'm all for that, and I too. I really feel that when you were saying that. Me too. Me too. Nell says her too. Yes, I mean that's a, that's a, a thing that's not 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 necessarily out the box. You know what I mean? Like we could create something that's completely no one's ever seen before. But for me, that was really important because I wanted to see things on the earth that were not any distortion. So we have completely an environment where there's absolutely no um, no distortion of the DNA. I mean that, that's not that's not assuming there's perfection. That's more redeeming an old thing, but. But in a way, it was like creating a new insect. Well, these are for joy and not to fix. It's already been fixed. We're doing this for just pure joy and out of love. Yeah, yeah. But it was, I was still saying, I was still saying in my world, this is what we'll have. Yeah. Hmm. Jean? Hmm. Oh. Can I share? <laughs> yeah. I was thinking um, when, well, so creating is um, in our nature because we're same as Father God, Creator, and <laughs> linking to <clears throat> that what Jesus said about that we will do greater things than He. And what I was thinking was actually creating the like because we're already um, technologically really advanced with the AI you know, artificial intelligence. Mm. So it just came to me <laughs> that um, we would be creating something that they would have a free will, but they would be perfect and not choose evil. Just like, like you said, you will create a mosquito which will not suck in blood. So I, I was just going off that direction about we will be able to create something that they would still have a free will, but they will not choose evil. Mm. That's something in eternity that it'll be, I don't know, perfect, <laughs> Make, making things complete and perfect. Mm. Now, what Jen just said, oh, I'm sorry, were you done, Jen? Yes. Okay. What, now, what Jen um, said kind of connected to the pathway that my thoughts were going. And um, so the question came to me, would we manifest things that were still that came out of the 12 houses or are even still the 12 houses part of the old or the what was oh that's a good question yeah what is old heaven and what is new heaven and what's the difference <gasps> yeah. oh like that that's linked with my scroll So that's, that's what mm -hmm. I yeah, I don't see there's any chancellors in, in a new heaven. Because all that old court system and, and everything like that is gone. It's complete. Just uh, everyone's just sons. 
So it's even beyond that stuff that hasn't been released yet. So we're even be way beyond that. Yeah, yeah. See, it's all, it's everything under eternity will, will have gone. So like, even like the glory cloud, the anything where it's, or the four, the, the living creatures um, that just show the four faces will be gone because there will be an absolute just exposure of everyone, including the Godhead. Because the four, the four living creatures are actually in, I, I think they're, I, I think they're in um, heaven or heaven of heavens, one of those. So they're actually quite a low level way of operating. Oh, that's a good question, isn't it? Will, it? will there still be all the angels as we know it? Oh. Well, we know there'll be no fallen angels. And if we can create new angels, Jane, isn't this almost like a clean slate starting fresh with no mm. evil and just mm. love? It's almost like a uh, a second round of age of new beginnings at a higher level. And I see also it's, it's the boundary between heaven and earth will be virtually non-existent. So we shouldn't think, oh, what's a heavenly thing and what's an earthly thing? Because there'll be no boundary. So um, so like you could be walking with angels, you know, in, on the earth. So we'll be we'll be walking in the in this in our in the fullest level as gods, but not saying that mm -hmm. we'll be above God, but we'll be so one with God that this this is why we can create at this level. Yeah, yeah. And there's so much unity with the Godhead that. Um, I would think we would we'll we'll know what well actually um there'll be he's given us freedom to create so again it goes back to um just again this great freedom to create because we're now at this level as gods to create as he created hmm yeah but yet still even higher than what adam did chain these new uh, perfect gifts you're making can they be given to somebody that's still in this in other words somebody at a kingdom level for example can they receive this gift and just enjoy it and delight in it oh, or is it only me? for Infinity, you can't go back to, to where we are here now. I'm, I'm wondering if it can somehow influence the current by just pure good, not fixing the evil, but just pure good as a perfect gift coming down from above, like coming down from the Father of Lights kind of thing, like James talks about. Well, that's certainly how I've been operating for quite a while now. I mean, I'm just pouring out all sorts of things onto the earth that 
people can use right now. Maybe that's what I'm doing and not realizing I was creating a new day. Yeah, so it's not fixing the old, but it's mm -hmm. adding to the current with just pure good and delight and joy and influence yeah. the current by doing yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, I've just been pouring out buckets of love and um, full provision and harmony and all that that's... Yeah, I mean, that's really what I'm doing, isn't it? I'm creating a new day in the years to come from, from eternity. That's what I'm doing. Uh, Jane, something that I, that I thought of when, um, or came to mind when Simone was speaking, the, the, the ability to create, kind of going back to Genesis 1 verse 1, um, but if, is, is it then... Is this what the enemy saw, what God had in store for us, and that's why he desired to become as God? He, he, that which God had, this with this that, this reality or whatever the, the the word is that God has got in store for us this new day, is this what the enemy saw that he then desired to, to take for himself, and obviously got kicked out for for you know, over, overriding his whatever his boundaries? Um, is this is this then what what the enemy saw? Um, of what we what we suppose, and then he wants, you know. Yeah, I don't know if I'm I'm articulating it properly. Anymore. No, I know what you mean. I, I I think that's a really good question, and I'm sensing yes. What about others? Yeah. We're feeling that it's very much resonating. Yeah. And it's the power. I mean, you can feel the power, can't you? Of Wow, it's intoxicating, really, to think that it's a blank canvas. And I think that's why we have to move into this, because we, we cannot stay saying, you know, we're little... You know, it's not about us. It's all about God. We can't stay in that frame. We have to embrace the full destiny of what we were called for, which is this. You know, it's it's not selfish. It's not power hunting to do this. It's actually how we were designed. And that's why all of us are desperately trying to put our creative stamp on the earth you can see it comes out of everyone in whatever field whether it's business arts um uh, innovation you can see everyone's expressing a form of creativity and they get immense pleasure from that when they have that freedom they're at their highest calling Oh, I've just seen like this spout, like just needing to release that for the that freedom for people to say it's okay. It's not power grabbing, egotistical. Um, it's okay. I keep uh, sensing that um, it's kind of hard to describe. I see myself with him before I came to the earth, like going back into his heart, but around him, seeing him create things and uh, watching him create. And then he's like showing me to how to create things. I, does that make sense? Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. What was just posted in chat to the artist? Yeah, that was good. And how how is he showing you to create? I don't really have words. I can't 
it's just coming out of my spirit and I don't know how to articulate it. I, I see him like creating things and he's just, it's like um, he's just showing me how to create these things, but it's hard to, I, I can't wrap my head around it. And it's one of those things you just, you aren't able to articulate, but you just know it. Because hmm. one of the things I've found myself doing recently, since I've been taking this position above the star houses from eternity, I've <clears throat> felt this huge desire to, particularly if I put music on, the moment any sort of music, doesn't have to be Christian music. Any sort of music seems to open up my spirit and I suddenly start this dancing over the top of the star houses. <clears throat> um, and I've even been dancing with the living letters and it's like, it's like wherever I, the dancing forms the creation. And I don't really know what I'm creating, but it's coming naturally out of my spirit and that's how I'm doing it. And it's just quite glorious. It really is. It's like being on the dance floor, but it's not about intimacy. It's about creation. It's been quite magnificent. And the other thing that's come to me is that I, I, want, I would want to create an environment where you can eat without putting on weight. So you can eat as much as you want. And that's what I've been seeing myself doing. So I like, I, I love like cakes and things. And, and I just see myself having this complete freedom. I can eat all these things off this banqueting table to my heart's content, but I'd never put on weight. And that's the new value I would put on the new heaven and the new earth. We receive it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> but that's a good illustration isn't it of how we can change the laws of nature so i think we've got to think like we can change the laws of nature so for example we could change there's no gravity um which means you could just zoom off and fly but then you'd have to change something else because when there's no gravity there's all sorts of other problems with the body that they don't work well gravity actually is a huge it's a huge blessing um, but that's the kind of illustration i think you've got to get your head around is changing thinking not in the current laws of nature oh yes and the other thing i came up with was that the river of life would could be chocolate and you could swim and you could eat and, and have all this chocolate and all that the flowers and things could be made of chocolate and you could eat them <laughs> oh, it, oh. You see, I have a yeah. theme here: cakes and chocolate. <laughs> Lovely, I love it. <laughs> I'm tracking. <laughs> so, a few days ago was Chanel's birthday, and um, I made this chocolate pear cake. And it's like we found it in the recipe book, and like Holy Spirit was so much on it. So Jesus was so excited. By and the Jesus chocolate. was so <laughs> excited. He's like doing flips, like as we're eating the chocolate. He's like, yes, loves it so much. So, uh, and we we go into heaven a lot and have a lot of heavenly chocolate experiences. <laughs> experiences. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's probably one of the things that we do the most no. in heaven. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it can involve. <laughs> Involve our mandates involve heavenly chocolate, even with healing or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you see, yeah, you see that links in with the river of life. You go into the river of life, yeah. and you're, you're you're floating in chocolate. It's the most healing thing. <laughs> I know. I have a vision for. My hair looking fabul fabulous without <laughs> slaving over it. <laughs> it was just instantly. I am perfect. 
That's yeah. Really, honestly, that's really what, I mean, it's, it's literally a dream because um, it's just like such a toil to get it to, you know, do what you want it to do. That's good. You see, that's opened up another doorway. I think anything you say opens up doorways to help people think creatively. That's so that good. means, like yeah, we could just choose to look differently as and when. So we could sort of morph. Well, on that note, I would change my hair color every day. Yeah, you see. Yeah. Without the bleach and all that, I would change. Yeah. <laughs> the highlight, it would be instant. Yeah, how fun is that? <laughs> <laughs> we could look completely different. We could put on any form of appearance. I mean, we could have such fun with that. be like going to fancy dress parties every day, wouldn't it? Oh, my God. That would be the Lord for real. <laughs> So I wonder if that means we could create, we could turn, we could choose to turn into say something like a bird and then we do just fly in the way a bird does instead of a human walking. Oh, I know what it is. It's basically, yeah, we could actually take on the dynamics of angels. You know how angels can do all this? And then they can move and they can morph. And um, That's the sort of freedom we could have on the earth. Jane? <laughs> actually, um, Saint Patrick, they were able to morph into those I uh, like deers so that's that's already like yeah. technology yes of course it is yeah so we naturally know that that is a, a pattern of heaven yeah so it's probably really absorbing that in our spirits and saying that that is a, something we can embrace I know I fight that in my spirit. I never liked it when I heard that. Did not like it at all. But I'm coming around to it. Okay, I want to go back to what he was showing me. And the picture I'm getting now is like, you know, on a potter's wheel, you have that lump of clay or whatever it is that's a picture of what he was showing me like um forming things with your hands and like a movement in and out and my hands were getting like they get whenever i'm praying for someone for healing or when that anointing is coming and and um it's actually, that's the best way I can describe it, if that gives anybody a visual. So like molding with clay? Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's absolutely, that's in line with what I've done before with my hands. All I've had to do is wave my hands and move my hands in some way over something to change things. Um, Jane, if I can just carry on. Um, do you, like you were saying, being able to move like angels and all that is to, to move beyond earth's limitations um you know to be able to create with the thought be able to move to translocate um all of those things all all of the physical inhibitions or limitations that we have at the moment is to be able to to live outside of that to have a new reality 
Mm, yes. Yeah, that's really resonating. I love that. I suppose the problem is all of our scrolls are about redemption. That's the thing where it gets tricky. Maybe that's, oh, something's coming to me here. That we might need to redefine our scrolls away from redemption to creation and look at them differently. Because when I see all my scroll, all I see is all the problems and what needs fixing. <clears throat> Whereas if I saw my scroll as my scroll is creating a new heaven. Oh, that's different. Any resonance with that, that we have to reframe our scrolls? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's one step up from changing everything to unlimited. Instead of thinking of lack, you think of unlimited. Now we've got to think about creation rather than fixing. Yeah. Yeah. Could it be? It, it just trying to, well, not trying to match it to redemption, but isn't redemption possibly? not fixing problems but removing the problem removing the original uh distortion of the dna um isn't that redeem also a form of redemption um instead of trying to fix problems remove the problem instead of remove oh remove instead of fix remove do you think maybe not even seeing the problem? Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, it, not seeing that there is a problem, just seeing total and complete fullness. Mm -hmm. You know, the word says in Ephesians, feel, uh, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Well, in him, there's no problems. Yeah. yeah. If I can use the, the mosquito example, instead of creating a new non-blood sucking distorted mosquito, um, is redeem the mosquito to its original purpose in Genesis 1 verse 1, um, where, you know, before it got distorted and, and went into a blood sucking thing. I feel that we still see our, our scrolls at times through goods and filters that we're in the midst of being untethered from, you know, yeah. and, and replaced with all those opposites of obviously a tree of life and mind of Christ. And um, yeah, and I, I feel that he, we're still going to discern what maybe needs to change and be healed and redeemed, um, but not an over-focus on that, you know, glorifying God and not yeah. the problem and not over-focus on the enemy or anything. Yeah, I feel like still, we still need to discern like what's on our scrolls, what we're doing, you know, what he's removing and re replacing it with. But, um, but yeah, focus on him and overcome by Abba, by Yeshua, you know, instead of the issues, right? And partnering in intimacy with him to create and redeem right yeah and as as we're led i think that it can get to a place of controlling if we try and force and manipulate things and but just let him lead obviously as it comes to how we should react to the scrolls but at the same time there is i i agree with everything that was said but i also think that there's a balance of um, yeah, we are we're called to create and to live out of newness and not live out of oppression of this is 
we're not perfect because we aren't there yet you know <laughs> i don't know about y'all but i'm not <laughs> like, he sees us in the blood of jesus as perfect of course yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he sees us as perfect mm-hmm. because he sees through perfection but i know that i still make mistakes and i still have hurts and pains and things that i'm working on um so but it's it he sees he sees through the heart's intentions and um i i don't know if y'all heard uh joseph sturgeon just had a new um teaching on love that he came out with in august podcast and the love part one is his july podcast revelation revealed joseph sturgeon and then part two was on intentions, intentions of the heart, and really good. Yeah, it's really, really good. And learning about uh, how to love and that we need to start learning uh, learning to love through, pe- like, the people's original intentions rather than what they did. And um, And that's how the Father sees us as well. Like, he sees our hearts and he sees our intentions, and, um, and he views us through that and he views our scrolls through that and we need to not live out of oppression or condemnation because he knows that our heart is there to be with him you know and to be or at least he he sees our hearts intentions in general and i'm just asking him if there's particular grids and filters things that he wants to remove today so that we can you know, replace, redeem, however you want to say it, so that we can be viewing our scrolls as he does, you know, in these areas, these specific areas. And I think that as as we walk into healthy relationship with that, then we'll be able to create in healthy ways because we will be more healthy as individuals as well. Mm. Yeah, and and the the less we're focused on our problems and the more we feel we're complete and whole and we live in the awareness of that wholeness, the more we're free to create new things instead of feeling like our whole focus has to be on <clears throat> redeeming what's wrong. I see it as a real change that it, this whole word about awareness has been coming to me so strongly recently that it's about moving to a state of awareness of our wholeness not awareness of our of our corrupt dna and there's a huge bliss that happens when we can get into that state and can get into that state quickly the moment it's it's knocked <clears throat> It's like the Mas- Maslow hierarchy of needs, isn't it? We can't actually focus on high level stuff if our basic needs are not met. You know, we haven't got water, food, shelter. And I think that's the same emotionally. If we're not emotionally completely full identity in Christ, and we, we, can, and we're not, we can't draw on that. Well, we're not drawing on it as, a, as a, almost an unconscious act. So a lot of us have been seeing this flow going arcing over the tree and it's like this circulation's happening that we don't have to work on so we get it going and then this identity starts flowing and it's it's like breathing it's just an automatic process um then once our identity is full then we can move up the maslow hierarchy of needs to to do something above that like creation but people can't think of creating things if they think oh i've got all this these problems to fix i remember i was started off like this in heavenly realms when i first got into it and i heard ways people talking about creating planets and i was thinking creating planets the last thing on my mind why would i want to create a planet you know we've got this all these problems in the world i'm not interested in creating planets and because i was at that point of all these problems have to be fixed first um and now i'm seeing it differently now i'm seeing it as if we choose the awareness that it's all whole it's all perfect and we get into that place of being there then we 
can bypass all that needing to fix the problems but we draw on that new supply and the perfection we draw on releases perfection i think that's what's been happening to me because so now i'm drawing on perfection so all i'm releasing is huge concepts like love wholeness health abundance wealth and i'm not going in looking at familiar spirits and oh i've got to deal with this principality and that it's all changed for me as you're saying that jane it makes me i mean it puts a whole nother light on that scripture um uh as a man thinketh so if he mm. and mm. uh <laughs> so uh, I mean you know that's that's a higher level but that, that truth still applies yeah 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 Gene a lot of what you said resonated really good mm -hmm. I agree um, I used to have a, the church I used to attend there was a, a woman that was a pastor over the um, prayer teams and she would always say, pray the answer and not the problem. <laughs> so that's kind of reminding me that we actually, it's our perception. We actually, when we look at others, we see others. And I ask the Lord this all the time. Let me see others as you see them. I don't see their brokenness and all that. I see them as a complete um whole person in Christ the way he intended them to be so and of course I don't have it all down you know I still have issues but um, I try to see others the way um, there's a song out there or used to be put your love glasses on so we see other people through eyes of love mm, that's good Donna It's beautiful, yeah, love that. So another illustration is coming to me um, is, you know when Adam was in the garden and he was told that he could name and frame the animals? I think that's like an illustration of what we can do. Um, Sharon has just joined us. Sharon Arrow. Oh, hi. Welcome, Sharon. Hi, thanks. But I'm wondering if, if we're short of our ideas, there's got to be so many ways in which things were already there that we can tap into what was it meant to be like um so that's where we can go back to eternity and keep looking for the blueprint of what was it meant to be like for example like uh, some of us in uh, had a formed a business group one of the things we were doing there was well what was the original intention of business was it ever meant to be around money and so we kept asking these big questions and then we saw that actually an awful lot of the culture was all meant to be complete giving, everybody giving to everyone else and there was complete fullness. So rather than getting stuck in, say, for example, a lot of business people, they've, all the focus is on, on kingdom business. You know, what is it? Let's just be kind and moral and um, to each other. We can go beyond that and go, well, what's the original intention of how everything was meant to work? And, it, and that's probably a, a stepping stone as well to get to this uh, new level of creativity. That it, it's probably hard if you haven't done much of that. Um, but really going back, like in the garden, how was it meant to work?
I think that's a very important question because like coming from a very conservative back, like Baptist background, I really, I used to really believe the lie of, um, you know, I mean, God is control in control of everything, but everything that happens happens for a reason. And if something bad happens to you, it's because God wants to bring something good out of it. He wants to like, you know, and, and sometimes the enemy is just a, not nice and we get attacks and so um and but that's especially like what you said about the mosquito jane i really i really really felt that and i think that there's a lot of that in this world where it wasn't the father's original intention and um and we need to learn how to rule and reign and create rather than um, just accept it because that's what we're here for. We're here for his sons to, to rule and reign over it, you know, and not just, don't just take it lying down, you know, stand up and do something about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And do for others. I keep hearing, am I my brother's keeper? And I say, yes, we are. This is not just for us. This is for the whole of creation. Yeah, you know what I'm seeing is, I'm seeing we've all got a really huge role in bringing a new heaven to to bear and that's on all our scrolls and that that really is almost the agenda of the day at the moment and um what i keep seeing is these angels i keep seeing me and all the angels pressing from either side earth and heaven so it's like trying like trying to mold it together and reduce the barrier so that it merges and I think that's where we're at at the moment is with with they're trying to bring what was into the is to come so we need to ask what is our role in that that merging or the thinning of the veil. Because the more we thin that veil, the more these other problems just disappear. You know, healing, trauma, um, financial problems, um, disharmony, they all begin to disappear. Oh, I'm getting something else on the, what the new heaven will be like. You know how in heaven we go, and the, we currently go, and we go, we go to one place, and we tangle with the seven spirits, and we go to one place, and we go to wisdom, and we, we engage the cloud witnesses, or we go to the court of angels, or engage angels in these separate 
realms and seeing that it's this bench of one concept will come in and it will be the main way of operating so there won't be these separate things everything will be benching as one in the new heaven there will only be a bench of one there will not be benches of three seven four there will only be the bench of one which is everything benching of one glorious united union oh, oh. And that confirms what we saw before and that's why everything is spinning around in this infinity around all together the seven spirits the angels the cloud of witnesses everything it's all knitted as one string Ooh. I'm hearing no separation, you know, like, um, and I'm also, you know, how sometimes we have clicks, you know, uh, certain, certain, you know, white people over here, brown people over here, black people over here, <laughs> yellow people over here. There's no separation. We're all, we're all um, one were one in him there's no separation at all one big family yeah It makes total sense, doesn't it? Because you couldn't have a heaven and an earth operating where some people said, oh, I don't like the thought you're creating this or you're doing that. I don't want that. But if everyone's in union, they'll want to create the same sort of things. I agree, and it's, it's all done out of love. It makes me wonder um, if what we're describing is the, the 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 ultimate one new man in the new day. Oh, that yeah. there's so there's so there's even different levels of the the one new man, and the ultimate one new man is in the new day. Where there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no um, separation between man and God. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's good, Simone. Yeah, I'm feeling that one. I'm getting rocked on that one. Thank you. Huh. That that's wow. If, if I can, I don't want to say add strong word, but if I can um, agree with, with Simone um, that it will be heaven on earth, on, on earth as it is in heaven, um, manifesting, it, you know, the manifest suns, all that type of stuff, but physically manifesting heaven on earth, the unity, the love, the, the harmony, um, heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've just realized the way we're going to, to get being complete abundance with no needs 
if we have a physical body on earth is the fact we can create things from heaven we know what to do so i see now why we have to learn this because this is this will be the new way the new, new laws of operating so i don't think it will be like Oh, we just walk everywhere and everything's all taken care of i think it's actually we all will go somewhere and then we'll just draw on it and and create what we need there and then and that's what will make it fun because, yeah, I'm getting confirmed on that. It's good. Yeah, because it's it's giving us something to do. Do you know what I mean? It's not just oh, there you go. There's heaven floating on a cloud. It's all done. You like at the moment we get huge energy and enjoyment from creating things. That's part of our DNA that I don't see get, will go away. Therefore, we have to be able to create things in the new heaven and the new earth. And we can only create things if it's not all, all there already. And that's why I see all these multiple dimensions of infinity. There'll be like a level one form of creation. And then as we get used to it and we get better, there'll be like a level two. That'll be more profound. And Ah, oh, so that's it. <gasps> that's what I'm seeing then. So all there'll be multiple levels of infinity, but all the other realms will disappear. Heaven, heaven of heaven, perfection will disappear. But there'll be multiple levels of infinity. So even the the cloud of witnesses and, uh, and slash the men in white linen, they'll become complete as well. Yeah, yeah. So all the scrolls will be completely fulfilled. Right. So they'll become, yeah. So they'll become part of the um, one new man as uh, well with us. Um, so it'll be a big, happy family. I'm, I'm just processing. Yeah. Yeah. And all, we had another revelation the other day. Oh, um, and two of us were really going, seeking heaven about this, about the bodies. What will happen? What, how all these people have gone to heaven without their bodies, right? They can't interact on the earth because they don't have a body. And so we were asking, well, what about all that? And then we got the revelation. We will actually be, our process now is to resurrect those bodies. Or it will be in the future when we can accept it. Um, such that everyone can have a body again. And then everyone can function on the earth and in heaven. Because that's the agenda a lot of us are debating now is 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 the biggest is the big bl blueprint the fact that we choose to take our bodies into heaven and so our bodies don't die um, but that then implies what happens to all the other people who do bodies did die. So I think that's why we've got to get to this point of understanding these big picture agendas and not get caught in the small agendas of fixing our world. Because if we are very close to um, latter days of a new heaven and a new earth being formed, that's got to be our agenda, not 
things like you know what what are the marriage laws it's got to be this big picture scenario and that's why i think a lot of us are seeing how we can redeem the lost and we can pull all these things out of heaven that were always meant to be um redeemed ready for the new heaven and the new earth i feel i'm discerning it's both i agree with that being both so yes sometimes it may be on your scroll to do court cases for the marriage laws or you know both i think it's it really is, it does depend on, on what's on your scroll and both we could do both as we're led and mandated but isn't what's on our scroll what we choose to be on our scroll according to what age we operate out on i feel i show me some things are very set things that he wrote on my scroll i agreed to do with him before he sent me from heaven to earth and other things we create with them and like you said based on what ages and and that's what the the revelation i feel i've received is that it's it's both does that make sense too like um that's the sense of talking with him about what are the set things that you wrote that i agree to do before you sent me from heaven to earth i agreed to this before i came to mm -hmm. earth and then what are the things that i'm creating with you co-creating with you painting you know as an artist with you like on my scroll so we've been yeah I just been thinking more mm -hmm. about that so almost like a um parallel uh what do we should call it parallel dimensions then that we we can work in all these multiple dimensions we can work in the dimensions of redeeming the earth but then we can work in creating a new heaven and a new earth yes if, that's resonating with me mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's really good yeah. mm. maybe that's to do with the merging you know i said like pushing of the the angels pushing the two dimensions together hmm. maybe that's it then that's what we're doing it's the both sides the more we can push from both sides the more it'll meet in the middle i'm hearing yes on that i'm getting <laughs> jolts of holy spirit as you're saying that too <laughs> yeah they just jerks like we call them unity unity jerks when we get it at once <laughs> i'm really that's really resonating with me yeah yeah i've been wrestling with that one. Oh, that's good well it seems like it would follow because um you know the godhead is in the was was the now and in the future too so as we're as our as our DNA is being restored, we ought to be able to do the same thing too. I'm just uh, I'm just agreeing with what Chanel was saying. Mm -hmm. Well, and you were saying that, that too, um, Jane. And then, um, so then if we are able to be in all three at once, then uh, like Chanel was saying. We ought to be able to, and then because our our we are multidimensional like God as well, it just seems to me it just follows that we could be in all. I mean, you know, just in different ages at different times doing different things. Yes, definitely. I feel such huge resonating on that, Simone. Hmm. <laughs> That would still leave us with the exhortation to make sure to not neglect the higher age portion of our scroll, though, because that's where the greatest need is at the moment. Yeah. I really feel like both. It's all of the above. I don't know. It's like, I just feel this. I just keep getting the sense that it's all of the above is, you know, it's all needed. <laughs> that's my sense of it. So it's like instead of being dual realms, we're going to be tri realms now. <laughs> I love it, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I just love, I just more and more where you've been led to operate in so many different places at once. Yeah. 
what we're talking about. It's just become the norm and it's just increasing and I love it. <laughs> I love the multitasking in him. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's multitasking, isn't it? And just recognizing we do, we are operating all these different ages, but don't, um, don't, don't just get, get stuck in one thing, I think. Oh, but that doesn't answer of whether we should permanently be operating from eternity though because that's what a few are seeing now that we can't fully operate and do these other mandates if we operate the lower realms because the chaos is too great and the pull the pull on the decay of the body and And also our ability to do stuff at a big level is restricted. Maybe we kind of have a bracket of ages that we're going to operate out of and your bracket moves up a bit. Mm, mm, I can definitely see that happening with me. Yeah. A range of ages. You can't go too much, but like you can't do the chances courts anymore. Mm. And maybe the, 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 the lower parts are going to drop off as you go further up. I think the main only restriction is within our minds. Yeah. And um, like, I don't know, it, it just, it, some things just kind of make sense to me, just the way that I'm wired, I'm wired differently than most people. And so like operating in seven or eight realms at one time. Okay. <laughs> makes sense to me. And that's what I do. And operating in multiple, because like we're, we were created after God's own image and he is infinite. And I'm not saying that, let I mean, I'm still working out some of the details, you know, I, I have my own stuff that I'm dealing with, but, um, I think that we need to get out of this mindset that I, we're on, maybe even only in one or two realms because we're like, there are so many things that we haven't discovered yet about, for lack of a better term, the spiritual realm about the spiritual things inside of life like we're really just beginning to scratch the surface yeah. and there's so so much um yeah i mean i i had an engagement with my future self a month or, or a couple months ago and i had skin of on like and i came in and flew in and like blasted myself me myself with something and something left that wasn't supposed to be there but <laughs> um and I don't even know why I felt led to mention that but um maybe just like we need to get out of our ideas of we should look this way or be this way because um or operate in one way or another because the Lord wants to break us out of our religious boxes even saying that I only operate out of one or two realms, I'm sorry, that's, that's a bit of a religious spirit because really I'm operating out of seven or eight and you don't even know it because we haven't engaged with those higher realms yet. Mm. We just don't consciously understand it. Yeah. So I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying like, yeah, it's, it's really all possible. <laughs> limitless right limitless <laughs> yeah exactly you, exactly limitless. changing face well. and changing your hair and i mean that's always just been kind of a given to me as soon as i found out that supernatural was real it was like okay i've been working the last couple of years to manifest my my heavenly body into the natural i'm not quite there yet but um i'm working on it <laughs> anyways and what what i uh, was led to do yesterday back to this elevator shaft thing i keep seeing all the time is um 
I, I was told to put a like a blanket cover on some of the lower realms. So the really low realms. So, you know, a lot of, uh, I don't know what the word is. I won't describe them. But the really low realms that some Christians are operating out of and to stop people going down there as much so that they were and then i'm constantly being asked to to draw people up call people up higher higher come up higher but then i see this flow and it's like all these angels and everything from infinity and eternity goes down the realms into the and it can actually even go right down into hell so that's how we redeem people up this elevator shaft and we can redeem them straight into eternity through these windows and so it's like a functioning kind of it's a way of sort of yeah i suppose you could almost no it's different from the timeline it's a realm kind of functioning and but but I had to close off these lower realms. So I think there's definitely a call to move to, yeah, to operate out of a few realms higher up. Yeah. I It reminds me of, I don't know if y'all have read the Chronicles of Narnia, the last book. It um, There's a whole thing when they're going into heaven and, and they keep screaming out, higher higher up and further in mm. higher up and further in go higher mm. up and further in and just going deeper and deeper and deeper into the lord um at the same time i and you know i fe i definitely feel jane that you are called to call people to go higher up mm -hmm. and to call people higher up yeah. and to help usher people into the higher and newer realms and oh and this is a thought i think as we go higher like we'll be creating higher realms to go into mm -hmm. Ooh, getting hit on that Ooh. and yeah. so it's like infinite higher realms um yeah and i feel my calling is also to to be joyful that the people are in any sort of like pursuing of the Lord and um, maybe not to make people myself. I'm not saying that you're not called to this. I'm saying myself to, to not make me make people feel condemned for being in not as high of a realm as I am. And and encouraging and rejoicing in the fact that they're in any sort of other realm, you know, whatever. Mm, and, yeah. um, yeah, it's just, sorry, I'm losing words. I'm getting, I'm like, just like, I'm just getting it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's, there was something that it was a couple i'm trying to remember exactly what the lord said to me a few weeks ago but basically to the extent that yes there are it's kind of a dual meaning and dual understanding and yes there are higher realms and high in going deeper and deeper into him and but at the same time like it's not it's, it doesn't operate how we do in our Greek thinking. Like maybe it's more of a, mm. a circular thing mm. than a linear Hebrew, yeah. oh, Hebrew, yeah. Hebrew thinking mm -hmm. that we we're thinking of this as a Greek perspective of I'm going higher and further up the line rather than it's all the same and it's all one in him and unity as long as we're operating out of him and not like the enemy, you know? Yeah. I mean, some of us are seeing it's like a Fibonacci kind of wheel scenario. It's not a linear line thing. 
and sometimes you go round and you end up going back down and to go back up and coming against what you've already met before. Um, I think the key question is, we've all got to keep asking though, is what times and seasons we're in and encouraging people to keep asking what time and season they're in rather than assuming they're in a certain time of season and therefore it doesn't matter about that. And I think that's what my journey has been on is that it's been this massive expansion of my awareness of the times and seasons. And that's what the journey is of a manifest son is asking and understanding the times and the seasons. And I think that's, that's what's been lacking in the body is we've not had this understanding. So that's why we've been playing a smaller game. Um, and it changes everything. If you believe now you're in latter days, if you believe, for example, that we've only got a generation to go, it changes everything. It changes what you do, what, it's, what pace you work at. <clears throat> and, and that's why I see the thing we've got to encourage people to do as fathers is encourage them to see what is the end game? What is the end time theology? What is their end game? is it changes everything and that's the weakness that most of us as christians we've not understood the end time game because we found it way too complex whereas now we've got the the tools the insight the ability to hear well we can really get a grasp on this end time game in a way that even the big apostles out there could never get the grasp on it um we we've got the ability to hear and that's what's so exciting is if we keep challenging everyone we can we can raise we can raise our generation to a whole new level that's that was would not be possible um i mean what we're talking about and debating and dialoguing here is way way beyond what the deepest theologians out there the greatest well-known apostles it's way beyond that and so the magnificence of of the responsibility we are being given as people who are not used to a platform is phenomenal that if we can embrace this and and bring it to the earth and not make it about too small a thing that's what's amazing and like I just listened to a few podcasts the other day on uh, Melchizedek on YouTube. Who who all these people thought Melchizedek was? All these theologians and and the thinking is not a fraction of where we're at. That's what really stood out to me: the difference between what people can gauge from doing academic study of the Bible and what people can engage by encountering heaven out of intimacy is phenomenal so i think that's why it's important to call people to play a higher game and that doesn't mean that we're making anyone feel guilty because people it's up to them what they feel we can't you know people make their own emotions out of responses um we can't create emotions in anyone it's what how they perceive it. Anyway, we must close. Gosh, we've been going on for ages. Um, anybody else want to say anything um, before we stop the recording? Are you feeling well, complete? Well, this is um, one summary that came to me. I'm not saying that. Well, this is just what came to me. And that I see the ultimate goal is to is for us to be um, at a highest level like God. And um, then I see us um, shifting the the twelve houses like a Rubik's cube to line up, so that the final outcome. Um, is for Jesus to receive, you know, the full inheritance, which is this great harvest, which, which will just um, populate the rest of the family, if you will, with the, with the Godhead, you know, so that 
we're all there with him side by side, um, you know, to continue to create. That's that's my that's the current um, stream that I just got. So, wow, that's I mean, powerful. the councilors' houses or the star houses? I mean, the star, I mean, I'm sorry, I meant to say the star houses. Oh. Because, yeah, because I see the star houses, and you know, Dr. O teaches on this really strongly that we can shift. Really, the, the star houses are to be a service to us to shift things the way that they should be shifted, the way they, they need to be um, aligned so that certain things will happen. And, and for whatever reason, it's a, well, uh, we're, it's, it's necessary for us to do that. And Jesus made a way for us to be redeemed through him, to, for us to take our place. And therefore, we're to turn around and do the same thing and make a way and a place for others to come and be, in the, and, uh, and be side by side or shoulder to shoulder, if you will, with the Godhead as well. Hmm. That's, That's how good. I see. That's how I see it. Um, uh, you know, I'm holding that loosely, but that's just what I got just as we were, you know, just processing there. And um, so I'm just saying, I'll let you say, I just see the ultimate goal is to be the highest level of God's that God intends us to be. And I just see us just being shoulder to shoulder with him. And um, literally side by side with God because we are God. It reminds me of the uh, <laughs> the Wonder Woman um, movie. I don't know if anybody saw that, but how she realized she was a God really from her enemy. But I'm saying all that to say that there's a high level of being gods that we're being called to where we're literally be side by side with the Godhead them, himself mm. or themselves. So that's, that's I just mm. want to submit that. Yeah, no, absolutely resonating with all of that. And I'm having massive things around the star houses now, but I'm seeing it, it's, you've got, you've got to get above it. You've got to take the, because the align the misalignment comes when you're underneath them and then their influence is is the wrong influence so you have to get above them and take on the imprint of the the correct star houses the perfection of what it's meant to show the image of in heaven and that's above it, not underneath it. And that's the problem, is that we're all operating in lower realms under eternity. So it's out of alignment in that sense. But it's not that the star houses are evil or they're, they're wrong. It's, it's our position in relation to them. And then when our position changes, it allows this activation of of the, the 12 strands of DNA and the 12 um, breastplate stones, which then brings us into the fullness of the one new man um, operating from eternity out of chaos. And I think that's why it's important to see, to tell people about this journey, that it's not enough to just say it's okay to stay in one realm because that's, they're not understanding the big picture if they think that that's all there is to it. And I think that's the danger we've got at the moment. We've got a huge population of people that only see the hev heavenly realms uh, is about going in the mobile court. We've got a huge number like that. They don't see it as anything beyond that. Or we've got this group of people who, who 
are encountering heaven really well, but they're not seeing what the end game is and how they can they can influence that. Um, so they're sort of exploring and that I'm just I'm really really seeing that the that the, the, the importance of this move moving up because you can't you can't function well when you're in the chaos that's the problem and everything we're doing is so is only so it has an impact but it's a small level impact compared to what it could be outside of chaos and that's why we're getting a lot of people saying oh, I'm doing all these court cases and it's making no difference and uh, and and then they're, they're getting in this wilderness because they feel like they've tried some things and it's not working and then they're going into doubt so we've got to show them the big picture of how you really really make this work um not the lower level revelations and the courts are really to a part to a point are lower level revelations Oh, well, we better turn off the recording, Bill. Do you want to? I'm turning it off. <laughs>